670 billion dollars. That's how much the state would actually pay for all the trauma, injuries, and deaths. Trauma remains to be the number one cause of death among Americans between the ages of 1 and 46. And 1.5 million, hindi lotto, but rather it's the deaths claimed by trauma worldwide all year. So it's a very important topic. 75 million years of life lost, mostly due to traumatic brain injuries and hemorrhage. But what if I tell you we can do something about it? What if I tell you that the death from traumatic hemorrhage can be prevented in up to one of four pre-hospital deaths and in one of two in-hospital deaths? Kailangan talaga siyang pag-usapan. That's where damage control surgery and resuscitation comes in. Damage control is of course a borrowed term from your Navy and maritime industry. Kasi the damage control concept was coined by the Navy and maritime industry um, as the emergency control of situations that may cause the sinking of a very precious watercraft. So instead na lumubog na lang yon, yung mga critically injured na warships, kagawin nila, they will have some protocol para hindi siya lulubog, para kaya pa nilang i-remedyo, para pwede pang magamit ulit. Which is basically what damage control surgery is. So in 1976, this was the oldest um, traceable paper related to damage control surgery. It's by Dr. Lucas and Dr. Ledgerwood, wherein they were able to write about the prospective evaluation of hemostatic techniques for liver injuries. Sabi nila, internal packs are very important for the control of temporary bleeding liver wounds, especially when the surgeon is not mentally prepared or technically qualified to do a hepatectomy, which is what they thought of was, was needed. Um, and then the patient can be packed first and then transferred to an appropriate facility for appropriate technical procedure within 48 to 72 hours. Sounds very familiar. Because in 1993, that's the formal definition of damage control surgery. Initial control of hemorrhage and contamination followed by intraperitoneal packing and rapid closure. And damage control has evolved since then and is now known to be a deliberate and calculated surgical approach designed to maximize the patient's physiologic status prior to the definitive repair of overwhelming injuries. So it's a surgical design with a very clear goal and an even clearer indication, overwhelming injuries. Kaso, nagkakagulo na because damage control concepts is ever evolving. But I will tell you what it's not. It's not a shortcut. It's not a shortcut na, ay, pag ginawa ko to, mas mabilis yung OR ko, tapos na agad. It's not. Neither is it a miracle. Remember that damage control can only be applied in a very special population of patients and extremists. So baseline, mataas na yung mortality niya. Eh, lalo na, kahit nagawin mo yung procedure, yung damage control surgery, mortality will range from 29% even in an urban trauma center and even as high as 45% in pediatric cases when they reviewed it sa isang level 1 trauma center in the US.
world moves in real time. So should our healthcare technology. With information needed, decisions to make, and experience to share. Every second counts. Live integrated tele-ultrasound enables real-time communication, remote collaboration, confidence, knowledge, and learning. The first ever integrated tele-ultrasound collaborative platform. Philips Lumify. Integrated Tele Ultrasound, powered by React's collaborative platform. Innovation and you, Philips. Why do we bother knowing damage control surgery? Admittedly, it's a method of last resort for patients at physiologic exhaustion. Yun yung mga patient na ubos na, ubos na, ubos na from the stress of the injury, from the stress of the trauma. And because we realize and recognize that physiology is an even bigger factor and predictor of survival than the anatomy of our patient. So, kung gagawin yung damage control surgery, what are the goals? And it's very important kasi yung steps in itself, not always the same. But the goal remains that we want to identify the injury swiftly, we want to control the hemorrhage convincingly, and control contamination desirably. So damage control has originally been designed for abdominal surgeries. So the steps in damage control surgery in an abdominal trauma would mean we have to execute a quick access to the abdomen, do a targeted exploration basing on what you expect to find based on your mechanism of injury to control the bleeding, whether we clamp, ligate, or pack the solid organ injury to control the contamination and spillage by suturing, by ligation, kahit nga i-clamp lang para magsara yung hollow viscous injury and to apply temporary abdominal closure. This is the abdominal closure and this is what we need. We need the sterile urine bag para ma-close off and ma-protect yung bowels. We have your visceral packs in order to keep the packing to your, so especially for the solid organ injuries that may be bleeding. You have your nasogastric tubes for drainage and your adhesive drape para to cover and avoid the loss of the mate. Damage control has been applied to a lot of other injuries aside from your abdomen. And one of the cavity will be your thoracic cavity, which damage control for a thoracic injury would mean intrathoracic hemorrhage control and pleural decompression. Um, it's the immediate task, but it's not designed to solve the complex chest trauma. Just manage it enough for the patient to survive, which is the common theme for damage control surgery. It's also applied in orthopedics. It's hinged on the idea of doing as little as possible, but just sufficient to save the patient's life. And syempre, ano ba yung mga problems with severe orthopedic trauma? You have your major bleeding, your major pain, your fat embolism. And most of these are actually managed with the mobilization and reduction and stopping the bleeding immediately. Music